Hello, hello everyone. My name is Daniel Orion. I am an amateur arachnologist from Denver, Colorado, and I am bringing to you today the start of a video series guide to spider identification. See, in my social groups, I'm known as that spider guy. And if you find a cool spider and you want to know what it is, you take a picture of it and send it to me. I'll be happy to identify things uh, for everyone. But, uh, you know, a lot of people might have an interest in also being able to identify spiders. After all, it's just cool to be able to find a spider and just know off the bat if it's dangerous or if it's rare or anything like that. But even though I do believe that there are a lot of resources available for learning how to identify spiders in this day and age, I don't quite think that any of this information is very beginner friendly. And so I kind of wanted to make a guide for people who have never even tried to identify any spiders before or learn what types of spiders there are out there in the world. This is a guide for you people to try and start learning a little bit about the basics of how many different spiders there are and how common their groups are and all of that. Basically, what this guide is hoping to avoid is scenarios like this, where you have a picture and people are wondering what spider it is, and someone says, uh, I don't know, maybe it's a wolf spider. Right? Uh, not really basing it off of anything visual, just knowing that wolf spiders are common in the area that they live. Or take a look at this friend. You might see this picture and think, uh, it could be a brown recluse. The spider is brown, but we're not really checking any boxes of what exactly determines whether something is that species or not. In both these examples, the guesses were wrong, and it would be very helpful to clear up some of that misinformation, for one reason or another. Now, there are a lot of reasons why spiders are important animals, and I have this section in this video to explain kind of why, because some of you might not be convinced that you even want to start learning about spider identification, right? After all, spiders are pretty spooky. They're kind of everywhere and they're kind of gross. So why would we care? Well, one of the reasons is that spiders are a really important uh, part of their food chain. Their whole ecosystem revolves around animals like spiders because they are both predators and prey. And there's a lot of them. So if we lose all spiders, the ecosystems kind of crumble, <laughs> right? Now, spiders are actually less harmful than other usually more popular animals. Even some of our smaller mammals can carry parasites, for example. Some of the really small animals, like ticks or flies, they're known pathogen carriers, but spiders eat those animals, so they're helpful in that way. Scientists are also studying spiders to harness the medical properties that are found in their venom of each individual species, as well as their spider silk, and how being able to reproduce spider silk might help with a lot of advancements in the engineering field. Lastly, the more you know about something, the more you understand it, and more understanding leads to less fear. We all know we could use less fear of spiders, right? I mean, let's face it, spiders are a little bit creepy. There's something off-putting about them. They have too many legs, they're really long, um, they're creepy animals, but they're also everywhere, and we kind of have to learn to cope and deal with them, and un being able to understand them makes that a lot easier and gives us all more peace of mind. So, now that we're getting started, uh, we have a daunting task ahead of us. Currently, there are over 50,000 different species of spiders recognized by the World Spider Catalog, and that is a lot of animals to learn. And that is why I am building this guide to kind of go through a lot of strategies that'll make this a lot easier. And don't worry, there is no reason to ever memorize over 50,000 different species of something. We are going to fold them into nice little groups uh, starting with some of the most commonly appearing families of spiders, but also some of the most memorable, so that it's easier to stick in our memory. Check out this, for example. This is a Venn diagram. You might remember it from your days back in elementary school. Basically, uh, all of the members that fit in the right circle would share some characteristics, in this case that they're common, and all of the members of the left circle would share ca uh, other characteristics, in this case that they are memorable. Uh, and only in the section where the circles meet in the middle do its members share both characteristics. So for example, real quick, we have our wolf spider friend over on the right side. Wolf spiders are everywhere. They're some of the most common spiders in the world. However, they vary greatly in both size and color, and there isn't really anything other than maybe their eye pattern that gives away immediately that something is a wolf spider 
and not any other type of spider, right? They're not any fancy colors. They're the standard brown gray. So they're not really doing us any favors. Over on the left side, we have the opposite problem. Take a look at this green lynx spider fella. So uh, these spiders are really memorable, right? You don't really see any bright green spiders like that, especially with all the spikes on their legs. They look really, really interesting. And even though it's pretty easy to memorize if I showed you a bunch of pictures of green lynx spiders, yeah, you would probably recognize it the next time you saw it, right? However, green lynx spiders aren't as widespread as wolf spiders are. Uh, and even though they do occur in my country of the United States, they are really only found in the southern states where it's more humid. Up here in Colorado, you will find no green lynx spiders, especially not around your house. So only in the middle do we find our target spiders, the ones we're really going to focus on. And in this example, I'm using the Black Widow. Black Widows, they all look uh, very similar, but it's a, uh, they stand out. They're almost completely black, save for a little red spot on their underbelly, which would be on the other side of this picture. Usually it's in an hourglass mark, but sometimes it's a little faded. Um, they're all black, but they're also glossy. They reflect light. Uh, they're oftentimes found in a web, and that web is usually very messy, and they've got long front legs and a long pair of back legs, too. So uh, this is a good example of the types of spiders that we're going to be targeting to memorize first. I'm not going to give you guys a like 20 different families. We're going to start off small, and then with the process of elimination, we're going to try and figure out uh, which spiders are which within our very homes and neighborhoods. The easiest place to start, in my humble opinion, is looking at a spider's web. Spider webs are very important. It's what makes spiders some of the most successful groups of animals in the world. And being able to see whether a spider is or is not in a web is actually very telling in terms of what type of spider it may or may not be. There are some spiders that are almost always found in webs and some spiders that are almost never found in webs, right? So as this video comes to a close, we're not gonna do any identifying this in this time. But uh, if you stay tuned for upcoming videos, they will be about all sorts of spiders that are found in webs. But we're going to focus on the most common spiders, not just in Colorado, not just in North America, but all over the world. And slowly but surely, we're going to start putting together the pieces of, of the puzzle and build a repertoire of spider knowledge. So I hope you enjoyed this introductory video, and I hope you stick with us for the following episodes. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.